Vicky here. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist in the Infection and Immunity Laboratory at Charing Cross Hospital in London. Uh, I've been working in hospital laboratories since I was 18. I applied to the John Radcliffe in Oxford when I was still doing A-levels as a to do work experience and they liked me enough that they sent me an application form six weeks later and I did a part-time training course so I spent four days a week at work and then one day a week at Oxford Brookes University doing my degree. At the end of four years I did a coterminous degree and completed all of my exams and my professional qualifications at the same time. I, when I was a kid, what I wanted to do was work with diseases and work as a scientist. And then I discovered that this job pretty much let me do all of that successfully and I haven't really ever considered doing anything else. <laughs> so the bulk of what we do is diagnostic laboratory work. So we deal with patient samples, which here is predominantly serum, and we do blood tests for disease either virology based, so we're looking for viruses in people's systems or antibodies to the viruses, or the immune system, so we are looking at allergic diseases where the immune system is overexcitable, looking at autoimmune where the immune system is attacking itself, and then looking at immunodeficiency on people who don't have functioning immune systems and where the holes are in their own immune system. That is versatile, so you can do a lot of different things and then the skills are transferable. So earlier this year I went to Sierra Leone and contributed to the Ebola crisis by working in a laboratory out there and found that the techniques in Western Africa are very similar but the challenges are very different. <laughs> so it's the, it's, yeah, it's a versatile career, which I like, and you can potentially go on to other things. Uh, I, I rarely get bored. So every job you ever do will have various sorts of auto, yeah, repetition. You'll do the same thing every day. But while we do similar assays, You'll do a different thing every day of the week, or you'll do an assay for three or four weeks, and then you'll change and do something else, which stops it getting too repetitive. Uh, it's interesting. You can follow patients through, and it's nice to see the work you're doing is making a difference. Uh, up to 80% of diagnosis made on the NHS are down to what we do in the laboratories, which is an incredible figure, and we do help, even if the patients are not particularly aware that we exist. Low lights, probably the hours. So this lab is, I, one of the reasons I was drawn to this lab is it's not a 24 seven laboratory. Night shifts, weekends, bank holidays, they can go really eat into your social life. My partner is in the police. So two 24 seven shift patterns do not fit together very well. Um, even here, you do get the odd point, patients if it's five o'clock on a Friday, your patient isn't going to wait until 9 a.m. on Monday for you to finish, so you can be here late, but it's part and parcel with the job. <laughs> Everything has changed. You doing anything in science, we may not be right at the forefront in the sense of research, but everything that is done in research feeds back to us. There are assays that we did when I was starting out 10 years ago that are just not done anymore. Machines that were new, that are now obsolete. Techniques that have just fallen out. We used to do a technique called for DNA antibodies called the far binding assay, which is now frowned upon because it's radioactive. There's it's so much, it's, you have to be on board and you have to be prepared to roll with it and not get stuck in one way of thinking. The 
easier. <laughs> Forward summation, further things. Immunology is in some ways behind the curve on automation compared to biochemistry and hematology, which is now all massive analyzers where we know we do still do a lot by hand, but with increasing workloads, the lower levels of stuff, shortened turnaround times, people expect results quicker. We can't afford that. It's things are tightening up. We're becoming more more automated, less big machines with buttons that you don't know what happens, but it's there's a lot of pressure. And I think there will always be pressure because people will always get sick.